look at somebody and say, you're the best looking person I've seen all day. Now tell them. Say, I believe you're born again. Tell them. I believe you're born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, mind renewed to the Word of God. This is the best day of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Two thumbs up. God is good. And he loves me. Oh, hallelujah. Say the blessings of the Lord make me rich. And no sorrow to it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Let's, let's go down, John. You don't mind if I sit down. I'm calling things that be not as though they were. I will be standing. I will be preaching from the pulpit down there. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth the son of the living God. Hallelujah. Boy, I could take confessions all day today. Let, let's take one that I love. Say the agape of God, the, agape of God. the God kind of love, kind of love. Has, been has been shed abroad in my heart, in my heart. by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, Therefore, I am a lover, am a lover even, as my father, even as my heavenly Father is a lover. Is a lover. I, am I am not a hater. Therefore, Therefore I, will let that love, I will let that love, the love nature of God, nature of God dominate, dominate my entire being. My entire being. I, will I will walk in the royal law of God. I will, talk I will talk the God kind of love. Kind of love. I, will I will act in the God kind of love. Kind of love. For, I For I am a new creation, a new creation. In, Christ Jesus. in Christ Jesus. Under the new covenant, under the, new covenant. Under the Abrahamic covenant, Abrahamic covenant. I'm, going to walk I'm going to walk in God's statues God's and commandments by walking in the law of the new covenant, which is to walk in the royal law of love. Hallelujah. Boy, you're a lovely looking bunch. Man, you look great out there. Hallelujah. That was awesome about the seek and save. I, how much did you say each bus cost? Pastor Dan, $150? $150 when we send the bus. So they get on the bus and they, they can go downtown and we're paying for their trip down. But in the meantime, they're getting saved, born again, and healed, and delivered. I told him when I heard a Friday, yeah, Friday night, I said, I want to take two buses this next time down. I want to sponsor two buses, 150 bucks each one. Now, normally I don't say that to anybody what I do, but I think this is a fine opportunity if you want to get blessed. Sponsor a bus. Then maybe you've got 10 already signed up for this next one coming. But you're going to get blessed. I can tell you that right now. Well, last week, Last Sunday, I said the, what they, they, they asked me every Sunday, what am I going to call my message? And I said, the Holy Ghost and me. And so I told you a little bit about me and the Holy Ghost. Um, Pastor Jerry and I were like many of you, 
we had come to a point where we needed God. How many of you need God? How many of you remember when you got born again? We were in debt up to here. We had three of our sons were the doctors had said they, they may not live to be 30. Three sons. We had everything we could think of was going wrong. And we got smart and asked Jesus to come into our heart. Hey, I like that. We got smart and asked Jesus to come into our heart. And um, he did. We did. And I gave you some testimonies last week of how the Holy Ghost, after we got baptized in the Holy Ghost, how the Holy Ghost began to work on us and we had these miracles. Um, do you realize that you're sitting right now have a miracle in your mouth? It's in your heart waiting to come out. There's a miracle. Say, there's a miracle, there's a miracle. In, my heart in my heart and in my mouth ready to come out. So I, when I told you last week about the, the lady that died over in, uh, what was that restaurant? Olive Garden. Olive Garden. The Holy Ghost told me to breathe into her nostril. And I, I thought I was going to throw up. I was scared. I said, are you sure you want me to do this? She's foaming at the mouth. She had, she had died in, in, the, in the restaurant. And the manager come and asked me if I could do anything. And I said, well, can't you get 9-11? <laughs> well, you, you let that happen to you and see what you think. So on the way out to see her, see where, where she was, uh, I said to the Holy Ghost, I said to the Holy Ghost, I said, what do I do? And he said, you do what you were, gave the scripture that morning when I breathed into the nostril of man, he became a living soul. And I said, you want me to breathe into her nostril? And yes, and I only want one breath breathed in. So I went out and took a look at her and she was foaming at the mouth and I started foaming at the mouth. <laughs> I said, are you sure I'm supposed to do this? And he said, yes. So I said, okay, I'll do this. Her grandson was standing over by the wall and he was crying that his grandmother was dead and people were standing around watching me and, and I'm waiting for 9-11 and they haven't showed up. So I took one look at her and I said, I'll, I will do it. So when the Holy Ghost tells you to do something, turn to someone and say, do it. So I got down over her, put my mouth over her nostril and went. And she came back to life. Well, that was after we had gone to Ramah. We're now preaching. And I think at that time we were probably in the schoolroom, weren't we, Jerry? No, we were in the little building. In the little building. But I wanted to take you today from the time we got born again, some, several things that had happened that the Holy Ghost was instrumental in. And I want you to listen very carefully because if you and the Holy Ghost get together, you're unbeatable. You're going to have everything God says you can have. You can be everything God says you can be. You can do everything God says you can do. You are absolutely, totally on top of the world. The best thing that ever happened to you. Well, I wrote, I t told Pastor Jerry this morning, years ago, I used to say, well, say with me, the Word of God, Word of God 
without the Spirit of God, I'll probably dry up. The Spirit of God, oh, the Spirit without the Word, I'll blow up. But the Word and the Spirit, you grow up. How many of you are seeing that now? The Word of God and the Spirit of God, you're beginning to grow up. Reve more revelation is coming to you daily, and particularly when you get, a, when you get these three men, that are probably three of the finest teachers in the world will be here for the Word of His power, you're going to get revelation that you and the Holy Ghost are going to take, and you're going to see things happen in your life you can't, I, I, maybe I shouldn't say you can't believe, but yeah, we can believe it in the name of Jesus. But when, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to go into all the details about how we got born again because that was a miracle in itself. Uh, when we went to this uh, little church we got born again in, uh, we got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to go through all the particulars of it, but got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And, um, but one, one night I said to the Lord, I was in taking a shower and I said, Lord, I know you in your Bible, you say that we're more than, we're victorious in all things, that we're more than a conqueror. But I said, I don't see this happening in the church. And he said, well, yes, it's not happening in the church where you're at because they're not renewing their mind to the word of God. And I said, what do you mean renewing your mind? And he said, um, that is in Romans 12, 1, 2, and 3. Turn with me there, if you will, please. So you're born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, but you must Get your mind renewed. So Romans 12. This is vital. Your life will totally change once you act on this word. In chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, he's talking to us, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, verse 2, and underline B, because B is a very important word in the Bible. B. For instance, is, is, it says in John chapter 3, verse 7, you must be born again. So be is very important. That is one of the most important words in the whole entire Bible. And here he says in verse 2, and be not conformed to this world. From the day we were born, we're being conformed to the world. That's what Pastor Jerry was talking about. The, the media and the television is conforming our kids to what they want. But it says we, but be, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. That measure of faith is calling things that be not as though they were. So when, when we make confessions, we're calling things that be not. It may be about our health. It may be about our wealth. It may be about our family. We're making confessions according to what God says and not what the world is telling us. 
So anyway, we got born again. Uh, we got baptized in the Holy Ghost and we began to renew our mind immediately to the Word of God. Changed our life completely. Getting into the Word and getting our minds renewed to what God wants and what God says instead of what the world wants and what, what the world says. Um, you know, the world, well, we just knock the hell out of the world. What do you have when you knock the hell out of the world? Well, take the, take the, I said hell, but that L in there, take the L out, what do you have? Word. Word. So we just knocked the hell out of Word. Did y'all get it? Are you sure you got it? Well, that's what we're doing. We're knocking the hell out of, the hell out of Word. That's why it says the Word and the Spirit, you grow up and and when I said, when I said the spirit without the word, you blow up. When I was growing up back in West Virginia, uh, the, there's a little building next to the, where we live. And this group of people used to come into the building. And we'd go over and look at, at them in the window and they was dancing and hooping and shouting, hallelujah, praise God, and jumping up and running around and they were called, they called them the Holy Rollers. How many of you ever heard of that? Holy Roller. Boy, they had a time and we used to sit there and laugh at them. No, they were, they were right. They were full of the Holy Ghost. Well, listen, they had to, they had to curve the walls so when they ran around the wall, they didn't bump into it, they just went around in a circle. And we'd, we'd laugh at them and everybody would make fun of them. Well, they were partly right, but they just didn't have the word in them. Now we're getting the word, say the word, the word. is in my life, in my life. And, the and the spirit is in my life, in my life. and I'm growing, I'm growing up and I'm going to get everything, get every, every spiritual blessing that God has for me, has me. physically, Financially, financially, mentally, mentally emotionally, emotionally socially, socially, and nutritionally, and, and every blessing God has blessing God is, mine. is mine. I accept it. I, I receive it. I, receive I take it now. Take it In the name of Jesus. Name of Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to you. Because you've said that, you've called things to be not as though they are. Something happened is going to happen to you between now and the time you get home. So anyway, we, we were in this small church and uh, we'd gotten born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost and our minds were renewed to the Word of God. And so... When we'd gotten born again, there was a young couple that we got to know very well in the church. And he was, they got him to teach in this, what they call a Sunday school class. And uh, I'd sit in his class. And then he got the word that he was to, to leave Miami and go back to Pennsylvania to be with his family up in Pennsylvania. And he came to me and he said, uh, Stan, I've got to go back to Pennsylvania. I want you to take over the class as a teacher of the class. And I said, in about 10 years, maybe I'll do it. He said, you're not going to get me teaching the Bible. And he said, um, Stan, you got to. And I said, why do I have to? He said, I can't find anybody else to take my place. And I said, you can't find anybody else to teach the Bible? No. So this Saturday morning, we, Pastor Jerry and I had gone out somewhere. And when I came back, on the, on the doorknob was a Dunkin' Donut napkin and says, you got the class. <laughs> I said, I can't find anybody to take it, so you got to take it, Stan. And I, I said, oh, man, what am I going to do? 
I don't know enough. We were just getting started renewing our mind to the Word of God. I said, I don't know anything. So that night, I'm sweating blood like Jesus did out in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I can't think of anything. Nothing. Nothing. Zilch. Nada. I think that's Spanish, right? So, Jerry, Pastor Jerry went to bed that night, and I heard a still small voice say to me, say, get the Knaves top, Topical Bible. Now, many of you don't know what the Knaves Topical Bible, how many of you have a Knaves Topical Bible? Well, some of you do. So I went, picked it off the shelf, the Knaves Topical Bible, and I opened it up, and it opened up to the, where it says Word. And I looked at that, and two, two scriptures jumped out right off of that page to me. It said, I magnify my word even above my name. Now, get this. He magnifies his word even above his name. And heaven, and the other scripture was, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall remain forever. And I said, my God, do you see what he, I said to myself, do you see what he said here? He magnifies his word even above his name. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will rem words will remain forever. And I, suddenly, uh, it, it was like Paul on the road to Damascus. I was laying on the floor. I got hit like a bolt of lightning just knocked me right off the chair when those two words came into me that was revelation to me. And I'm laying on the floor and I started yelling for Pastor, I didn't call it Pastor Jerry then because we weren't a pastor. But I said, Jerry, Jerry. She said, what's the matter, honey? I said, I got the answer to everything. She said, what are you, what are you talking about? I said, it's in the word of God. Raise both hands and say that the answer to everything is in, is in the Word of God. Do you believe that? Yes. Oh, anyway, so I started teaching the class the next, on Sunday, that was Saturday night, uh, getting hit like Paul did on the road to Damascus where he was, became a Christian. I'm teaching a class and I'm starting in, in the Presbyterian church teaching about healing and prosperity <laughs> and baptism of the Holy Ghost. That went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> after after a, a time of teaching, um, one of the officers of the church came to me and said, uh, Stan, I've got something to tell you said, I love you, Stan. I love you with all my heart, but I got to tell you something. Uh, we're giving you the left foot of fellowship. I said, oh, thank you. Please, go, glory to God. In, that, in other words, they cut me off of the class. I couldn't teach the class anymore. I'm teaching what they didn't believe. They didn't believe in the healing, didn't believe in the prosperity, they didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so the next Sunday... I'm trying to make this as short as I can. The next Sunday, Jerry and I had no, no place to go because we had been booted out of the church. <laughs> I mean booted out. That's what they call the left foot. How many of you had the left foot of fellowship where you came from? Some of you probably had the left foot of fellowship. You believed what they didn't believe. But I, I said, how can they not believe it? It's in the Word of God. Well, if your mind is not renewed to the Word of God, there's a lot of things that you will not believe or you'll have trouble believing them. So we went out into the living room and we got in, the, the, we were standing in the middle of the living room and we said, I get, we're going to have church here. We're going to hold church right here in the house this morning. And we were crying. We got on our knees. We said, God, we, Holy Ghost, we submit ourselves to you. We, like we did 
a couple of Sundays ago, we surrender. Whatever you want us to do, we'll do it. Just then a knock came on the door. Is Gene and Glenn here? Stand up. Glenn's on the camera. Where, where's Jean? She's standing up right there. They went to the same church we went to, and we, they said, can we come to church at your house? <laughs> said, we want to come to church. Because they were, bap they were one of the two that were baptized we're also baptized in the Holy Ghost going to this church. So church actually began in our house that Sunday morning. And we've been going to church ever since. So we begin to have studies at the house. And then when we had certain, we never asked anybody to come, did we, honey? Not one person did we ask to come to our house. But people would hear about us and say, could we come over to your place? And so they'd start coming to the house. She had a woman's Bible study and, and then on Sunday we'd hold like a little church. I wasn't a pastor. I was not ordained at that time. And um, so they'd come to the house. And then I, one day a knock came on the door Open up the door. Jerry Masana, where are you? Is Jerry here this morning? He's not here. Jerry Masana is standing at the door. How many of you know Jerry? He looked like something the cat drug in. <laughs> he said, I, he said we, we didn't know who Jerry was. And he said, yeah, what, 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 what can we do for you, Jerry? And he said, well, I've gotten saved and I went to this church and he said, something was wrong. I felt so bad and I said, somebody told me, he said, you need to go over to Stan and Jerry Moore's house. They're having church over there. He said, can I come in? And that, he's been here with us ever since. Glenn and Gene has been with us ever since. They were the first three that came to church. Well, I was going to have Jerry tell you a story this morning, but he's not here, of how the Holy Ghost would speak to him. He, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost there with us. He started renewing his mind to the Word of God, and he and the Holy Ghost would hook up, and he would call uh, Pastor Jerry and say, the Holy Ghost told me, wouldn't he, certain things, call you that you had something you need to talk to me about. And he, he, he got real intimate with the Holy Ghost and did. And I was going to, I won't do it. He's not here, so he can't do it. About how his son lost the ring in the ocean, a wedding ring in the ocean. And the Holy Ghost showed him what to do. And he, he died, he, he died dove in to where the, uh, he, the Holy Ghost told him to dive and he stuck his hand down in the ground and the ring came up on his finger. Isn't that the way it was, Jerry? Now, this is, this is a true story. In the ocean. And the Holy Ghost told him what to do and he, he went down and stuck his hand in the, in the sand down at the bottom of the ocean and the ring slid right up on Jerry's finger. Hey, listen, that's worthy of a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, we're doing all this at home. We're not ordained. We hadn't gone to Bible school at that, that, at that particular period of time. When Jerry's mother, I married Jerry because of her mother. Her mother was the best cook in the world. <laughs> Am I right, Stan? Pastor Stan, wasn't she a great cook? I told her her, her first name was Leona. I said, you ought to open the restaurant called Mother, Mommy, 
Leona. Oh, cook. She could cook like you can't believe. But that's not why I married Pastor Jerry. I found out a long time ago that if you line into the first scripture, the first scripture with a promise is God respect your mother and your father and honor your mother and your father. And guess what God says? And all will go well with you and you will live a long life on this earth. Well, that he said to your mother and your father, but also, I also saw in there, it said, honor your mother-in-law and father-in-law and all will go well with you. So I, I knew, I had enough sense to honor my mother-in-law and father-in-law and she had enough sense to honor my mother and uh, all is going well with us. And I and she are going to have a long life on this earth. Don't, 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 don't look at what you see or what you hear or what you feel. Go by what God says. If you do what I say to do, this will happen to you. So I stand on that. And every time the devil tried to throw something at me, he said, uh-uh, I got news for you, devil. No, all is going well with me. All is well in my house and I'll have a long life upon this earth. Well, I'm telling you, I'm calling things to be not. Now, I, I'm going to be around. I'll see you on your next birthday. I'll, I think what's coming up, Valentine's Day. I'll see you this Valentine's Day, and I'll see you the next Valentine's Day. And I'll see you next Christmas. In the Christmas after that. Because he said, I, I will determine when I want to go home. Now the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy. That's why we got to get to these youth. That's why we have to get to the young one. The world is trying to conform them to the image. And it's getting... It's getting something else out there, really. Um, but anyway, let me, let, me, let me go ahead with you. We went down to her mother's. We'd always, about every Sunday, we would go down to eat with her. And this one day we went down and she was cooking up a great meal. And I was sitting in the living room. She came out from the kitchen. She said, um, Stan, I'm gonna lay down a little while before we eat. I said, sure, Nan, go ahead and lay down. I'll wake you up. And uh, so about a half an hour later, I went over to her and she said, something's wrong, Stan. And I said, what's, what's wrong, Nan? She said, I don't know. She said, I can't get up off the couch. And I said, well, let me help you. So I took her by two arms and pulled her up and she just collapsed in the floor. And I thought I dislocated her elbows or something. I thought maybe it's something I did. And she said, no, it's something in my back. So we got her to the hospital and uh, got her there and the reports were terrible. Two of her, what do they call those? Spinal, well, vertebrae had disintegrated. And they, the consensus was from the doctors that she'll never walk again. Never walk again. Now listen to this. This is a woman that played golf, avid golfer, was so active, so she just did everything. She'd go shopping like you can't believe. She was a shopper, a cooker, a golfer. She was active and everything, and now the doctors are saying, your days are over. Jerry was home, uh, Pastor Jerry was home one day, and she said, the Holy Ghost said to her, you go over to the hospital. We know what the doctors have said. Go over to the hospital and tell your mother if she will forgive she, who she has odd against, 
I'll heal her. Now, Jerry, get your mic. You finish that little bit of the story, what, the, what, what happened. Well, uh, first of all, I was shaking in my boots because uh, you j I wasn't the kind of person that goes and tells your mother something like that. And I don't correct my mother and I don't tell my mother what to do. It's just the way I was brought up. And <clears throat> I wasn't even sure mother wanted me to know anything about whatever. I mean, there are certain things, you know, in life, sometimes you don't want people to know at all. So I was quite taken by this. But obedience, I remember driving over, because I had to drive all the way over the causeways, because the uh, hospital was way down over, in, over on the beach. When I got there, mother was laying in traction. She was totally in traction. She couldn't move uh, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Her spine was disintegrating, is what it was and um, disc and so, so on. And, <clears throat> and I looked at her and I said, Mom, God sent me here and I have to tell you something. And I told her, I said, he told me, he told me who she was, had, had to forgive. When I did, she just welled up with tears. They just come running down her face. And then the, she said, the heat, she said, heat started to radiate from her toes all the way up through her legs, right up to the top of her. That afternoon, she was walking the aisles in the hospital. The, the next week was Thanksgiving, and she was in the kitchen making apple pies and pumpkin pies. And, But let me, let me tell you another one. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not gonna, because we've taken quite a bit of time today, I'm just gonna tell you a couple situations. But I want you to understand how important it is for you and the Holy Ghost to be linked up. Yes. I mean, big time. She went, she took her grandkids skating, ice skating, She's 70 some years old when she, about 70 some years old, took them ice skating, hadn't been ice skating in years. But she wanted to do things with her grandkids. She fell down and was injured when she fell down. Now, in about a day or two later, she was to take all of us, we were to go down into the Keys for a some a little fishing tour down there. And um, she was hurting bad. She didn't want to go to the doctor. So we took her down and said, man, maybe you better see the doctor. She said, no, I promised the kids I'm going to take them down to the fishing, down in the Keys, the Marathon, and we're going. And I said, well, we got to get something for you to sit on, so we got to enter to. <laughs> She, ease her down so she could sit down. Well, the next morning when we get down to the Keys, uh, she's going to go fish and she liked to fish. And her, her son had a nice boat and she said, Stan, I'm going fishing. I don't care what I feel like. And I said, okay, Nan, I'll wait here until Charles, her son, pulls the boat up, gets you on the boat as best we can. And so he pulls up, I get her on the boat, and I forgot to get her her little inner tube. Now she was on her way out on the water. It was a, a, day, a day there wasn't a wave in, on the, the ocean, not one wave. It was like glass. And I said, oh my God, I forgot to give her her inner tube. And I said, oh, Lord, take care of her. Please, Father, do something for her. Protect her. Do whatever you can, whatever, whatever you can do. Make it an easy day for her. They go out quite a ways out, and suddenly a wave comes up. 
Now let's, it, everything is like glass. And this big wave comes up and picks the boat up and lifts it clear up out of the water. She's sitting on the, where the, they sit on and fish from. And it threw her up in the air. Brought her back down when the boat crashed back down. Whatever she had wrong was healed. <laughs> Later when she went to the doctor to check it out, she had broken her pelvis. And the doctor said, did you know you had a broken pelvis? And she said, is that what I had? <laughs> he said, yes, and it was the best formation I've ever seen of a pelvic back together. Isn't that right? I'm telling you, you got to get with God. You got to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You got to, you and the Holy Ghost have got to be such friends. Just think of it. Your daddy is the creator of the whole thing. Say, my dad, my dad created, everything. created everything, made everything. Made everything. Everything belongs to him. Belongs to him. My, big My big brother is the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus. My, Savior, my Savior, Lord of my life, Lord of my life. Master, of my soul. master of my soul. Without him, Without him. I, can I can do nothing. And my best friend, my best friend is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who, resurrected who resurrected Jesus from the dead, from the dead. who created the heaven and the earth, and wrote the Bible is my best friend. Devil, don't mess with me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, now be, I've, I've got so many other testimonies to give you, but I'm not going to do it today. If you'd like to hear a few of them later on, I'll give them to you. And we, we have some tremendous testimonies. But before we go today, we're going to call things that be not as though they are. Are you ready? Yes. Say, I cancel, I cancel every, attack every attack of sickness, of sickness disease, disease, pain, pain and infirmity. Sin against, us. sin against us for Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus has redeemed us, has redeemed us from, the from the curse of the law and his, with his stripes, with his stripes we, are healed. we are healed. I cancel, I cancel every, attack every attack upon the finances of God's, finances of God's people, people for we are the seed of Abraham, seed of Abraham and are blessed above all nations of the earth. The blessings of the Lord make me rich and add no sorrow to it. I call all the wealth of the wicked into the hand of the righteous one. That's me. For much money cometh to me now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I bind, I bind rebuke, rebuke, and cast out, and cast out the, spirit of fear, the spirit of fear, worry, worry doubt, doubt anxiety, anxiety, and unbelief, and, unbelief, and give them no place, them no place in, my life. in my life. I pull down all strongholds stronghold and cast down every vein and vein. wicked imagination exalting itself against the knowledge of God. And I bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I root up every plant in me that the Heavenly Father has not planted and I replace it with the image of God. I decree the spirit of power, the spirit of, power of, love, of love, 
and of a sound mind established my thoughts in the Word of God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I loose into my life the anointing of God to destroy every yoke and remove every burden. The Word of God in my mind, in my mouth, and in my heart that God's kingdom will dominate the earth through us. I yield to the fruit of the Spirit and mortify the deeds of the flesh. I pray that the gifts of the Spirit will flow freely through my church to set the captives free and edify the church. And I decree and declare that God's people are enjoying the days of heaven on earth now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Stand on your feet. Take hands with those across from you. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you that this word of his power conference is going to be one of the most powerful conferences I think that you'll ever attend. And we're not having it somewhere that you have to go to pay $500 for an air flare. It's right here on this church. There, Brother Copeland is a prophet of God. And I believe that Bill Winston is also a prophet of God. And Jerry Savelle is one of the best teachers in the world. So we got two, two prophets and three teachers that are coming loaded. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna get in here and draw every revelation in them into us. We're going to draw from there. Yes. John, come up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Something, something's taking place now. I can... It, it, it is so powerful up here I can't even begin to tell you but in your life the wealth of the wicked is being laid up for the just that's you and we're calling it in now in Jesus name debt free debt free free, free, every debt we own, call them debt free in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, oh, no man anything but to love him. Say, Father, we give thanks for all you provided for us. In Christ Jesus, in his shed blood, we confess this day we are the blessed of the Lord. This Abrahamic covenant we entered into in the new birth is a covenant filled with the exceeding great and precious promises and blessings of God. And we partake of those blessings those promises now. We are the healed. We are the successful one. We are the prosperous one. We are the redeemed. We are delivered from the authority of darkness and we are translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son of love. Blessing are overtaking us. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. All that we set our hand to prosper. 
Father, we unite with every church in the body of Christ. It is under the blood of Jesus Christ that believes in the resurrection and is under the authority of the Word of God. And even now, Father, as we set our hand to, into the hand of the one next to us, that one prosper in every area of his or her life, spiritually, physically, financially, mentally, emotionally, socially, relationally, personally, nutritionally. And we praise you. We thank you. We give you all the glory. We thank you, Father for the newness, the freshness, and the completeness of life, we now enjoy, we accept, we receive everything you have for us. In Jesus' name, and they all said, Amen. Hallelujah. Give, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, man. Something big is in the making. Big. I open the altar to you. God bless you. Have the best day of your life.